Okay, it is officially May the 29th, my birthday. So on behalf of all of you, I would like to wish myself a happy birthday. Oh yes, welcome to this very special birthday edition of Food and the Single Guy with me, your very own Amaru. Before I continue, two things. There is nothing wrong with your set. I am now 28 again. Secondly, those of you that know me, you know that I always travel on my birthday, but due to this damn pandemic, I am stuck at the house. So I figured, why not do you a special birthday edition of Food and the Single Guy? So here we are. You guys, what I'm gonna cook on this episode of Food and the Single Guy is something that I haven't had since the late 80s, I believe. It is a fish innate to my country. In my country, we call it Kandratiki. And I'm going to put the Latin name in the video description box for your convenience because boo boo, I cannot pronounce that stuff, okay? But it's some, it, it is related to the trout family. And like I said, it's innate to my, uh, to my country. I am going to make this fish, this dish with so much love. First of all, because I haven't had it in such a long time. And secondly, because it's my birthday. All right. Now, without further ado, without too much chatter, let us continue. Okay, you guys, so this is my fish. As you can see, it is frozen. I live in Europe, and obviously, I don't have access to fresh tropical fish, so I have to buy it frozen. And this is what it's called, kandratiki, kandratiki steak. Um, this is the way they were cut. And this is the Latin name. I hope you can see it because, and I don't know how to pronounce it. Don't, don't make me pronounce it, <laughs> but this is the Latin name. Okay, in case you want to look it up. I'm going to put it um, in the description box for your information in case you want to look it up. But what I'm going to do right now, I am going to thaw the fish and um, then I'm going to season it. Here we go. So we're going to allow this to thaw. And I can tell you, you guys, I haven't had this since I left my country in the early 90s. So I'm quite looking forward to cooking this. Oh, yes. Okay, beautiful people. So those of you that have been with me since the beginning, you will know what's going to happen next. Because in my country, when we clean fish or certain types of meat, we always soak them in a basin of water with some lemon juice or some vinegar or some lime juice or even some oranges sometimes. And the reason we do that is to cut that raw fishy scent, okay, or that raw meaty scent that a lot of meats and fish have, okay? Anything you put inside your body has to be clean and that is why we wash our fish with some lemon juice or some lime juice or some vinegar. Today I'm going to be using a little bit of lemon juice that I have left in this thing and some vinegar. All right, let's get to it. There we go. I'm going to also add a little bit of vinegar. There we go. So we're going to allow this to sit for about five to seven minutes upon which we're going to rinse thoroughly. All right, you guys, so now we're going to rinse the fish. All right, you guys, I am now going to put the fish in a colander because we want the fish to be completely dry before we season it. See? That's what I'm talking about. So after about a couple of minutes, we're going to season the fish and allow it to marinate overnight because that's the way I like it. All right, beautiful people. It is now time to season the fish and we're going to season the fish with some black pepper. A generous amount. There we go. We're also going to add some salt. And what we're also going to add is a nice amount of garlic powder. There we go. Now, for now, this is all the seasoning you will need. Because keep in mind, we're also going to make the sauce. And the sauce is also going to be seasoned. So worry not, your food is going to taste delicious. All right? All right. Now, I'm going to cover this with some aluminum foil, and I'm going to allow this to marinate overnight. Okay, people, let's have a look at our fish. 
It has marinated overnight. Ooh, honey. It smells delicious. Mm. All right, you guys. So what we're going to do next, we're going to coat the fish in some lightly seasoned flour. I seasoned my flour with some parsley, with some black pepper, a little bit of garlic powder, and some salt. You can also use breadcrumbs if you so desire. And by the way, you don't have to do this. This is the way I like to do it, okay? Just to crisp the fish up just a little bit. You know what I mean? All right, let's continue. Okay, you guys, we are now going to coat the fish with the flour ever so slightly. And like I said, you guys, this is the way I like to do it. Because in my country, a lot of people simply deep fry the fish and do not coat the fish with the flour or the breadcrumbs, okay? So keep that in mind. And now it's time to fry these bad boys. Now, boo-boo, when your fish is fried to perfection, it should look a little something like this. And I can tell you that you will be tempted to eat some of it. Don't do it. Don't do it. Wait until the dish is finished. Okay? All right, let's move on. Okay, you guys, so today I'm going to put my new pot to the test. You saw the old one. The Teflon coating had come off, so I went to the store and I purchased a new one. We are going to put this baby to the test and... We are going to start with a little bit of oil, just like so. So by now you know how things work up here. I'm going to turn on my cooker hood. It's going to make a lot of noise. Bear with me. Now what I always add to this recipe is a little bit of shrimp paste powder. Just a little bit. To that we're going to add the onions. Of course, you're going to give this a good stir and you're going to allow the onions to take on some color. Now, what I also like to add to mine is some galangal root. The sweetness of the onions and the sweetness of the galangal root are going to add such a delicate flavor to your fish. And keep in mind that the sweetness of the onions differs very much from the sweetness of the galangal root. So, we're going to allow this to continue to cook for about three minutes on medium-high. So, as you can see, the onions have cooked down a little bit. The garlic has taken on some color. Very nice. So, next what I'm going to add are my tomatoes. There we go. We're going to give this a good stir. And now, to this, we're going to add about 200 milliliters of water. There we go. So now we're going to cover the pan and allow the tomatoes to cook down significantly. So let's have a look at our sauce. Oh yes. It's getting there. So when the tomatoes have reduced almost completely, that is when we're going to add the fish. Alright? Alright. Okay you guys, let's have a look at our sauce now. It is looking good. So now it is time to add the fish stock cubes. There we go. We're going to give it a nice stir. And as you can see, the sauce is rather thick. That's what you want. But we're still going to add another droplet of water. Just a little bit. There we go. We're going to give it a good stir. And now we're going to add the fish. You're going to give it a gentle stir. And you're going to allow this to simmer for another 10 minutes or so. All right, beautiful people. Let's have a look at our fish. Ooh, honey. Mm -mm -mm. Doesn't that look gorgeous? Oh, but it does. Let's not forget about our dear friend Scotchy. Yes! And now we're going to allow this to simmer for another two minutes and then it's time to serve this dish. Alright beautiful people, if you follow me on my social media, you may have seen my beautiful dish. My mom says it makes her dizzy, but I love my dish. So this is what it, my mom is here, she's laughing in the background. And she's trying to be very quiet, yes. 
she's white knuckling it. But anyways, we are going to present you with the final dish. This is what it looks like. And what I always tell you, color makes everything a little prettier. So we're going to sprinkle a little bit of finely chopped parsley on top, just like so. And I think this one is done. And there you have it, you guys. Doesn't that look gorgeous? Doesn't that look delicious? Boo-boo, let me tell you, it was both gorgeous and delicious. My mom and I both had some, and we both agreed that it was thebomb.com. Okay. Now, to give you an indication of the texture of this fish, because this fish is a very firm fish, um, in 2011, I believe it was, that I went to Malta for the first time, and that is where I had swordfish for the first time. And if you've ever had swordfish, swordfish is rather firm, but swordfish is a little tougher than this fish, okay? Just to give you an indication. Now. If you decide to try something similar to this dish or you want to try my recipe with the real fish, let me know how it turned out because I'm always interested in hearing from you. In the meantime, I am going to go out. I'm not sure what I'm going to do, but I'm going to go because I don't want to be stuck at the house on my birthday. Okay, I'm just going to go for a walk or something. But I want to thank you so much for watching. I'm looking forward to seeing you on another video. Thank you for all the love and support. You be well. Take care. Stay safe. And until we see each other again, have a good one, you guys. Bye.